empty walls Famous who's so famous, number one is Sarah Ball I do what I want when I want and how I want it Leave you with the one in the air, that's how I roll I got changes, bro, I don't care about no goal Better so much better for thin, incredible Always on the show so they know that I still got it And I never feel sorry, yeah, on top of the world This is me, I'm so royal And you all wanna be round Yeah, you all wanna be round Round a champion, a champion So it's been a year since I started using the Weber Summit charcoal grill on my channel here and I thought that's a good amount of time to kind of give you a feeling of what it's been like to use over that period of time. And I gotta tell you, as someone who has been using ceramic cookers for a while, I love how Weber has captured what's great about ceramic Kamados and then avoided a lot of the issues related to, to, to ceramic cooking. And I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it later in this video, but they really knocked it out of the park for a first year cooker. And it's kind of surprising that this is their first attempt at making a Kamado. Now that doesn't mean the grill's perfect. Mine has a small smoke leak in the front, which drives me crazy, mostly because it led to a complete breakdown in customer service with Weber. I'll tell you more about that story later in the video. They use plastic wheels on the back and metal casters on the front, and for a $2,000 grill, that's, I just can't do that. Even if plastic is more practical and durable and lighter, it, it's just a principle, you know? For the same reason, they should have included a grill gripper and an ash tool, which is absolutely required to use this grill properly. And not only that, industry standard, every other Kamado company includes this stuff. Should have been in there. They also attached the lower vent assembly with fake leg sockets carried over from the kettles. And as far as I can tell, they don't have any other use for those sockets. So there should have been a little bit more refinement, refinement there, but that's largely just aesthetic. And the design itself is really, really good. Some people complain that it looks too much like a performer, and in my opinion, that's not a valid criticism just simply because the performer's awesome. And if you've ever used one, there's not a more convenient setup that I've ever run across. And we'll talk more about that later. Furthermore, there's things that they did that a lot of times it feels like they were kind of in my head when I was using some of my other cookers, my ceramic cookers, because they fixed a lot of the stuff that I used to think, man, I wish this didn't do this. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to find out that they actually went out and did research and, and, and talked to owners of other ceramic grills and asked them like, hey, what do you not like about your cooker? What would you change if you could? What do you love about your cooker? What, would, what do we need to definitely put in? Because they kind of got it all. Like, and, and the end result, and I'll talk about this later in the video, it's just a better workflow. It's just from end to end, it's just a little bit nicer to use at every step along the way. And we'll talk about that later. But for now, I wanna start off by talking about the, the dual walled insulated, air insulated design because I think that's part of the genius of this grill and it's kind of the starting point. So if you've cooked on a ceramic cooker before, you know what makes it awesome is the versatility, the temperature range and the temperature control. Like you can cook 225 degrees one day and 800 degrees the next. You can set temperatures and more or less lock it in. I mean, it's not as set it and forget as some people would let you think. There's a reason why Big Green Egg slapped their name on a barbecue guru temperature controller. People buy those things, but it's still really, really good compared to a lot of cookers that are out there. There have been other dual walled metal cookers before for, and some of those are fantastic. But the mistake that those manufacturers made is they shoved oven grade insulation into the cooker, which made them a little bit too efficient. Because the, the cooker holds the heat so well, the fire has to be so small that sometimes it smolders. Sometimes it goes out completely if you're trying to cook at low temps. Weber, by not using insulation, they dialed in the formula and it feels almost exactly like cooking on a ceramic. So you get all the benefits of cooking with ceramic and none of the problems with ceramic itself. So you avoid the weight and you avoid the fragility and you get the same cooking experience, or at least it's super similar. So you can kind of tell by the plastic wheels that Weber did not put a lot of thought into aesthetically impressing you with the build quality of the grill. But that doesn't change the fact that it's extremely well built. And if you're like me and you're coming from a ceramic grill, you may not immediately recognize that because you're used to the weight associated with a ceramic cooker. So when you lift the lid the first time, it feels 
light, you know, because it is. But in reality, it's much more durable than the ceramics will ever be just by the nature of the materials used. Weber used stainless steel as the work surface tabletop, and I think that makes a lot of sense for the work for a work surface. I think wood looks prettier, but a year later, it never looks as good as when you buy it. So there's just, it stains, it fades, it cracks. So the good thing about stainless steel is it's easy to clean and it's always gonna look the same if you take care of it. The body of the cooker is made out of porcelain coated steel. And if you've ever had a La Crusette Dutch oven, you know why this is awesome. I mean, it will never fade, it'll never rust. As long as you don't damage that porcelain coating, you are good to go forever. And it'll clean up as good as new years down the road. It's a great choice. You will never have to deal with any of the issues of crazing, which is these micro fractures that happen on ceramic cookers, which everybody will tell you it's the most natural thing in the world. And it is, but it doesn't change the fact that it, it, it doesn't look great. So this will look, should look as good as the day you bought it years down the line. And I love that. The hinge is incredible. They did a really, really good job with it. They attached it to the support ring instead of the lower part of the grill. So if you lift it up, it, it may have a little play or feel like it has a little play in it, um, which may give you the impression it's not as good as it is, but it's fantastic. I mean, that sucker is overbuilt for what it's designed to do. And the other thing that's cool is because the cooker is metal, they have attached the lid itself to the bands that go around the cooker and so you never have to worry about tightening the bolts like with ceramic cookers your part of your maintenance is you have to go and check those bolts every every couple of months to make sure that they're not coming loose because you'll lift the lid and the thing will fall off if you don't check them and so this is just not an issue you don't have to deal with that with this so they did a really good job the top vent is redesigned and it's really, really good. You have all the functionality you need. You can dial in low and slow temps and you can open it up for really good airflow for high heat cooking and it won't rust, it won't leak. You don't need to keep up with extra ceramic parts like the Big Green Egg rain cap or anything like that. Like it's all right there. They did a great job with it. It never gets hot. I love it. Now this might be funny to say, but Weber made a fantastic charcoal grate for this grill. And the reason why it's important to point this out is because there's an entire industry built on replacing the charcoal grates and ceramic cookers. So like I've been replacing all my cookers with kick ash baskets, which I'll put a link to that below. It gives you better airflow, makes it easier to clear ash. They're just a really good product. With this, you don't need it because the functionality is kind of built into the cooker itself. So they, they did a really, really good job. And not only that, it's got such good airflow that you can actually burn lump or briquettes. So whichever fuel you prefer to use, you're all set. So there's not a lot of cookers out there, especially in the ceramic world, that give you the option of burning both if that's what you want to do. With other ceramic cookers, eventually you're looking at replacing the ceramic firebox that's inside. And every grill company I've ever owned has done something to try to make their fireboxes better. And, and by the way, Kamado Joe has got the best one right now. You should check that out. If you're, if you're thinking about getting ceramic, I would recommend you look at Kamado Joe. But uh, in this case, the Summit doesn't have that issue at all because the cooker is metal and it doesn't need the protection. That's why we have a firebox in the first place, is to protect the outside walls of the ceramic cooker so you don't have to worry about that cracking. So we put a ceramic firebox in the middle and that takes the punishment. And eventually, they almost all will crack in time and they'll need to be replaced. If you buy it new from a dealer, there's a good chance that that'll be covered under warranty, but if you buy it used or if you buy it from Sam's Club or if you do something to void your warranty, then you're you're kind of on, on your own there. So um, I like the fact that this is an issue I'll just never have to deal with. And, and in a lot of ways, that's how the Summit works. There's a lot of things you just don't have to deal with because it's made out of metal. And the grill's held up great over the last year. Like there's no, the only rust is like on the charcoal grate itself, which is exactly where you'd expect it to be. You know, I, my only my only real complaint is the aesthetics, but I mean, I'm, that's not, I'm not even sure that's a fair criticism because it was right there. I mean, there were plastic wheels there when I bought it. And you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like dating, like when you get married, you know, if your wife has these certain flaws in her when she's dating and you marry her anyways, 10 years down the road, you can't get all mad because she's the same person. So the build quality is really, really good, but it's the workflow that makes life easier. And it's not one big thing as a bunch of little things. There's, 
The Ash Cleaner works awesome. It's just incredibly good. Even though it's the same one that's on the kettle, it's the best Ash Clean Out system I've seen on a Kamado short of uh, having a shop back outside. And even it may work even better than that because eventually you gotta change out the bags for the shop vac and, and that, that gets to be a pain in the butt too. So I love the Ash Clean Out. I love the push button fire starter. Even though I use my flamethrower most of the time because I feel like it's a little faster and it gives me more control, it's great that it's there. There's a hook on the side for you to hang your grates when you're not using Using it so you don't have to put it on on the ground there's a spot underneath for you to put hot stuff and until you're in a situation where you're holding something hot and you don't have a place to put it like a something cast iron or something you know ceramic that you need to put somewhere you know it, it, it's just difficult to appreciate how much how, how convenient it is to have a spot that you can put stuff that's hot and not have to worry about it. The, the tool rack moves out of the way so you can get below underneath the cooker to access that spot for hot, greasy things. Uh, charcoal stores. There's a silly little basket in the front. And I know this sounds crazy because it's a cheap little basket, but just having a basket and a place to put your thermometer and, and things like that when you're not using it, it's really, really convenient. And, and, and that's just sort of how it works with this entire grill. From beginning to end, they've kind of thought of everything. For those of you that use barbecue gurus or something along those lines, the temperature controllers, they, it comes with a port already drilled out. So all you have to do is put your adapter in and you're good to go. That's so much easier than either having to drill the hole yourself or trying to slide one of those adapters in the lower vent and sometimes they leak and uh, you know, it's just, it's just an easier system to be able to plug your fan in and then put the plug in when you're not using it. The cart itself has a wide stance. It's got big beefy handles on it. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over. You don't ever have to worry about moving it around. No problems there. The heat deflector is, it, the heat deflector is genius. Like they did their homework there. It's got a hinge on the side, so if you wanna add wood, you can. It's air insulated itself, so that prevents stuff from burning. The, it's made out of metal, so you can lean it against something. You don't have to worry about it falling over. And mostly, it's great because you can slide it underneath the cooker and it goes away. So you don't have to find a place to store a dirty heat deflector. That, that's awesome. And that shows that they did their research. Like, because one of the problems with some of these other cookers is when you're not using these accessories, there's no place to put them. And so what you end up having to buy or build storage and being able to take the cooker and everything that goes with it and put a cover over it and you just move it into a corner and your whole cooking setup would go away. I mean, that's, that's awesome because normally when you're in this, you, you need a place for your charcoal and you need a place for your accessories and you need a place to keep your thermometer and you need a work surface and and all this is in one compact package it's awesome even for people with not a lot of space you're it's a big grill but it's all there you don't need anything else so i love that i think the workflow is just it, from end to end it's better it's easier to use and it's just a nicer experience nothing magical just a lot of little well thought out things because they did their research and it, and it shows. So people ask me all the time about what accessories I recommend for the Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. Uh, I was hoping to be able to recommend the uh, Kamado Joe Jotisserie, uh, but I, I can't get confirmation from Kamado Joe that it fits. I've, I've emailed them twice and haven't heard back. And since that time, one of my subscribers named William Hudson actually bought the rotisserie, the jotisserie and he got it to work on his, on his summit, but it, it required a lot of modification. So generally speaking for most people, I think it doesn't fit unless you're good at working with tools. And I actually don't know what all was involved there, but he said it was kind of a drag having to, having to do all that work to get it to fit. So I'm going to assume that it doesn't fit. And, and so we'll just go with that. Um, as far as, as far as accessories that I do recommend, obviously you need a good leave-in thermometer if you're gonna do low and slow. I like the Thermoworks Smoke. It's a little expensive, it's 100 bucks, but it'll double as an instant read thermometer as well because the meat probe, the other probe, is really, really fast. So you won't need a separate instant read, which is nice. Um, if you can't afford that, the Maverick 732 is really nice as well. Uh, it's a little cheaper in the, in the trade-off is the build quality is not quite as good and the and the meat probe's not quite as fast but other than that it's a perfectly good thermometer and if the smoke wouldn't come out wouldn't have come out i would i would still be recommending that uh, as my first choice um first accessory i got for this uh grill was the cray cork cast iron grate which is awesome if you like 
sear marks. You'll never get better sear marks than off this grate. Uh, the downside to it is it's kind of heavy and you have to keep it oiled. It's real cast iron, so if you burn off the seasoning and you don't spray it back down, it'll, it'll start to rust. I don't, I don't actually use that as much as I used to, and the reason is because I got a slow and sear low profile from Adrenaline Barbecue Company. I'm lucky, I, get, I do contract video work for them, so I kind of get to play around with their toys. This one I got the prototype early, so I've been using that for several months, and it never leaves my summit. I use it all the time. In fact, the only time I haven't used it uh, recently was uh, when I did that 12 rib cook where I cooked 12 racks of ribs at the same time I'll put the link I think it's that corner I'll put it up there um, and then we'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see that but that was the only time I pulled my slow and sear low profile out of the kettle because I like it so much I still don't think the summit needs it need like I don't think it needs any extra accessories it works like right out of the box but whoever puts these dinky little baskets charcoal baskets in the box this is the charcoal basket that Weber should have included in the first place because it's it's thick, it's heavy duty, it's got a water trough right to the side there. It's really easy to use. I, I just love it. And so I'll put links to all that stuff below. Some of those are affiliate links, which means if you if you're thinking about buying that stuff, if you use that link, it will they'll give me a little bit of a kickback as a thank you. And the stuff costs the same to you. So if you, if you're so inclined, please use those links. I would really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you find it cheaper somewhere else, get it somewhere else. I totally understand. But if it's all the same to you, if you use this, that'd be great. So the story about the smoke leak is very frustrating because it's so different than what I'm used to from Weber. Um, in the past, their customer service has been amazing. Even, and you know what? Even since then, the customer service has been really, really good. But what happened was the cooker developed a smoke leak the first couple of months I was using it. I called in and they said, use it for a couple months and then, and then it should seal up on its own. I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. It didn't work. I called back in. They asked me to do the same thing again. Still didn't work. I called back in. This, at this point, it's probably six or eight months into owning it and we're starting to look for other solutions. And so my customer service person is out there talking to her people and they're firing off situations, uh, you know, ideas to me and I'm trying them and you know, it's still not working. And uh, you know, the, what's frustrating is I look back on it now and, and like what has happened is the gasket has dropped. Like there's the gaskets hold to the dome with these two little, like kind of look like staples. And in, in between there's a little gap in the gasket between the dome and the gasket itself. And, and that's where the smoke's leaking out. There's not a problem with the gasket itself. It's just, it's just not, not sealing, you know, and if, if we just did a little line of some sort of adhesive and would hold it on there, that would, that would fix it. But nobody, during all this, nobody actually looked at my actual specific situation closely. I feel like those engineers or whoever they were dealing with, the customer service people could have fixed this super easy just by engaging, you know, but instead they were giving me these <laughs> solutions that a lot of them didn't even make sense, but I was going through the motions and and working on their, off their checklist because they're customer service and they give me support and, and they probably know what they're talking about, I thought. One day, after a week of this, instead I'm expecting them to give me another solution or send me a gasket because they never even sent me a gasket to try replacing that. That's, that's how hard they tried here, right? Um, they just stopped, like nothing. Like they told me this is not their problem this is the way the grill's designed, it's supposed to leak. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? It's supposed to leak. And, you know, are you telling me it's designed to leak? Yes, it's designed to leak. And why, why, why does it have a gasket? And, and they didn't have an answer because they don't have an answer. And it turns out customer service person and her boss took the summit that was in their, in their office outside. They lit it up once. And since her boss said smoke came out of everywhere, then they determined that the grill was designed for the smoke to come out of everywhere. And so this was not their problem anymore. And that's how they left it. And that's where we are today. And it's ridiculous. And it's so out of character for Weber and I'm very disappointed in how, how they handled this. And if it was any other company, it probably wouldn't bother me because I'm used to, you know, you're used to people skirting responsibility, but not Weber. That's not how they've done it in the past. And, and I hope this isn't indicative of the future, you know, um, because you know, part of what made Weber special was the customer service was amazing. And now it's, it, you know, this was definitely not amazing customer service. So that's the story. It's frustrating. Not much I can do about it. I can't really fix it because again, I can't put adhesive on my grill um, because 
it could void my warranty. So <sighs> that's what it is. As far as alternatives, I've said this before, uh, if you, you should go with your gut. So no matter how many times I tell you, I think this is an amazing grill. If you still want a ceramic, you should get, you, you should get a ceramic. You should get, if you want a big green egg, get a big green egg because you're not going to be happy with something else. Um, it's always going to be that grill that I should have gotten the big green egg back then and I didn't, you know. Uh, personally, if I was going to get a ceramic, or, I mean, knowing what I know now, if I was out there thinking about buying and I still wanted a ceramic just because, you know, this, this doesn't impress you for whatever reason. Um, and I, I know it doesn't for some people. So don't, you're not going to offend me. This, all this is about helping you guys find your, your correct cooker for your family and your situation. But my suggestion would be look first at Kamado Joe. I think it's the best bang for the buck in the ceramic market. I think it's the most innovative company. I think it's a, a still a good value because of some of the things that they've done this past year. I have a video that I will put, I guess it's this corner, I'll put a link to of the 2017 Kamado Joe with all the new features. And then I've also got a video of two briskets, one I cooked in the Summit and one I cooked in the Kamado Joe. They're two of my favorite videos that I've done. So I'll, I'll put links either in that corner if I can, or if not, I'll put it below in the description box. Feel free to check those out. And I also stand by my statement in my previous video, most people's money would be best spent with a kettle and a slow and sear. I think especially the 26 inch kettle is the best bang for the buck out there and the slow and sear makes it just a better cooker all around. Also, the Weber Smoky Mountain, if you're just thinking about smoking and that's what's important to you, the Weber Smoky Mountain is a better pure smoker than the Summit. I know that sounds crazy, but it's got better capacity. It's got more, it moves more air, so you get a little, a bark forms a little faster, that kind of thing. It's really nice. And the downside to it is it's a, it is a uh, dedicated smoker. It's not really for grilling, but there's a new channel I want you to check out called Phil in Florence, and he is my kind of guy. I love what I call grill hack channels. So heavy metal barbecue is one of my favorites, and now this is my new one of my new favorites. He's gonna, but he's new, but he's gonna be around a while. Um, now keep in mind these aren't like high production value channels. These are high idea channels. These guys have toys and they play with them and they tinker with them and then they show you and and they're just so much fun to watch so check out phil in florence according to him you can make the smoky mountain cook like a grill it only cost him like 12 bucks to make it happen so check out that link i'll put it below let me see i guess that's it i really appreciate you guys watching um if you like stuff like this please subscribe uh and and share this video with other people like if you know your friends on Facebook or you're a member of a forum or a Facebook group that they would find this interesting. I would really appreciate it if you shared this. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time.